tonight. Tributes are laid near the grave of Jesus the Nazarene. Caiaphas speaks out on the security at the site. Mary, the mother of Jesus, declines an interview with us. And a follower of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, talks to me about what Jesus meant to her. All this and more on Jerusalem Tonight. Earlier today, people came to lay tributes near the entrance of Jesus' grave. The plot was donated to the Nazarene by Joseph Arimathea, a respected member of the council. A security guard has been placed at the entrance of the grave site. The guard was placed by Chief Priest Caiaphas, who joins me now. Good evening, Caiaphas. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good evening, Esther. Thank you for having me. Jesus of Nazareth was pronounced dead yesterday afternoon at 3 p.m. Pilate gave consent for him to be buried immediately. Why did you feel it necessary for a guard to be placed at the entrance of the site? Yes, Jesus was pronounced dead yesterday at 3 p.m. and had the burial due to our custom. The guard has been placed in agreement with Pilate to lessen the temptation of his followers. What temptation? Well, you must be well aware by now that Jesus had declared many a time that he would die and in three days rise again. Yes, he had said that he would be handed over to you and be killed, which you denied would happen earlier this week, but that is what's happened. I disagree. Jesus wasn't killed yesterday. He was executed. Big difference. And if it could have been prevented, we would have, but it was not possible. He was a deceiver of the worst kind and needed to be stopped. The guard at the site entrance, if I may get back to the original question, has been placed to prevent any of the Nazarene's followers from stealing the body. Why would they do that? To try to prove that Jesus' fake prophecy that he would rise again after three days of being deceased was true. This last deception would be worse than the first. On Monday, we'll remove the guard and let the dead rest in peace. Well, thank you for that information, Caiaphas. Thank you, Esther. Caiaphas there explaining the need for security at the grave of Jesus. Earlier today, I tried to have an interview with Mary, the mother of Jesus, but she didn't really want to talk to me. Here is that footage now. Hello, how can I help you? Hello, yes, are you Mary, the mother of Jesus? Yes. Were you there yesterday when they executed your son? Yes, it's, it's just not the right way around. I'm sorry, I, I just... No, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Please, can I just ask you a couple of questions? I'm, I'm sorry, you know, it just, it's, I'm sorry, I can't. I, I'm, okay, I'm but really just, just a couple of questions. I'm, I'm I just so want sorry, to know. I, I just can't. And now one of Jesus' followers joins us, Mary Magdalene. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. We understand it must be hard for you to be here, but we are grateful. Thank you, Esther. We are now all aware of what happened yesterday for safeguarding reasons. My team and I were not allowed to be present at the death, but you were there. Can you tell us what you witnessed? Take your time. Um, yes, I was there. I saw him. I'm still at a loss about what has happened. This wasn't the outcome we thought we would be having. That is true. We know many people believe Jesus to be here to rescue them from Roman rule. Is that what you believed? I, I think at first I believed that, but then it went beyond that. It wasn't about being ruled by the Romans or being rescued from the Romans. Jesus was my friend, he is my friend. And I know he came to help. Help, what do you mean help? Help me, help you, help all of us. Help us to know how to love, really love. His love to us was unconditional, is unconditional. That's what he came to teach us how to love unconditionally. I don't understand how 
someone who came to love, came to teach us how to love can be killed and not just killed, but killed with such brutality that was so horrific, so awful, so terrifying. I don't understand how someone can be killed because they loved. But can we really call it love? It is common knowledge that Jesus declared he would pull down the temple and build it within three days. Is that a love-filled statement? Seems quite a destructive mentality. Caiaphas, chief priest, mentioned earlier this week that he believed Jesus to be starting a revolution. What is your response to that? I think he's right. I think Jesus was starting a revolution, has started a revolution, a revolution in people's hearts, challenging them to really think about what they say, what they do, how they take care of the less fortunate. We live in a society where the rich are getting rich and the poor are getting poorer. Children, widows, the homeless, the marginalized foreigners, they are looked down on and they're not taken care of properly. Jesus came to change all that. Jesus spoke about that not being right. Jesus taught us how to love, even how to love those who've, who've hurt hurt us how to forgive yes well those are big ideals and challenging to the everyday person would you not say yes but he was showing us how we would be able to achieve them and now that he's gone i'm i'm not sure i understand what it was all for did jesus speak to you at any point yesterday did he speak to anyone um, yes. Can you fill us in on what he said? Uh, he didn't speak directly to me, but he did speak. I'm not sure I remember everything he said. I mean, I think I do, but I'm not sure I'll get it in the right order. I know at one point he said he was thirsty and a guard gave him a drink from a, a sponge on a stick, excuse me. Our records show um, that there were two other men killed with Jesus at the same time. Yes, he spoke to one of them, telling them that he would go to paradise with him. I know that he said this because I was wishing that I could go with him too. Um, then he uh, told his mum that he should look after she should look after John and that John should look after his mum you see even then he was thinking about everyone else sorry it's okay take your time obviously we all found it strange yesterday that between the hours of 12 to 3 p.m the sky was like night time this has been attributed to Jesus dying our weather team however think that one has absolutely nothing to do with the other do you have any thoughts on this I believe the darkness was to do with Jesus dying from the moment they put him there he asked God to forgive them he said they didn't know what they were doing and that was why God should forgive them. I don't think he was only talking about the men who were killing him. I think he was asking forgiveness for us all. Hmm. Apparently at 3 p.m. he cried out. What did you hear him say? He asked God why he had gone away from him. The word he used was forsaken. Then he took a deep breath, cried out and that was it i'm sorry i don't think i'm going to be able to continue thank you uh we seem to have lost miss magdalene uh who was just recounting the events of yesterday surrounding the death of jesus of nazareth for our viewers who are still in the dark jesus the nazarene who some have now called the christ died yesterday at 3 p.m. on a cross. It was said that he was sent by his Father God to bring salvation to all, but this promise seems to have been stopped in its tracks. I've just been asked to look at an email which has just come in. 
It's from a man named Robert Centurion. It reads, Hi Esther, I felt compelled to write into your programme. I was there yesterday. I can't disclose my position, but I was there. I saw it all. Don't ask me how I know this, because I don't even know myself, but I know that this man who was on that cross is the Son of God. <laughs>